I just want to say, I cherish these moments. We don't have no coffee yet. Do you see a coffee pot? Look, no. the Joker's waiting for the coffee pot. So we have Shannon at the cafe. Brewing up a hot cup of java. And this is our... Second. Episode of... Da -da -da. Coffee. Cookies. And comics. And comics. I'm Frank. And I'm Chris. Welcome to the next episode. Hopefully uh, this will be just as exciting as the last episode. Just not as long. Um, they call me Tyree too. I know what, hey, I know you don't want to go into that, do We don't need to go into that. I just don't want to confuse people. There is no confusion. You just introduced yourself Christopher Tyree. Chris. It don't need to be Tyree. It's just Chris. All okay. right. That's gaming. This is comic books. Okay. Let's separate the two. Here we go. Anyway, um, yesterday, while we're waiting on our coffee, I went to Rush Springs, Oklahoma, that is. Oh, I thought it was Arkansas. Anyway, Rush Springs had a, their watermelon festival. And if you haven't been to it, wait next year, go. They have rides. It's like it's like a huge fair they got going on like there. Like a little carnival? Yeah. Hmm. It's awesome. And for a dollar, I got this giant quarter cut of watermelon. I couldn't even finish it. Man. So fresh we, watermelon is great. Oh, it was so juicy. It's hard to find, you know, really good fresh watermelon. Although there are some really good, you know, you always have some market vendors out here selling watermelon. That's where you want to buy it from. Yeah. Well, that and they have, uh, because I didn't know this, but Rush Springs, I guess, is the watermelon capital of the country. Really? Everybody, did not even know this. I guess everybody gets their watermelon from them. Ooh. There was watermelons. I'm not even joking. It's so huge that it must have weighed like 50, 60 pounds. I've never seen such huge watermelons. Wow. It's like, but um, then uh, this one vendor actually was selling corn on the cob. And oh my God, it just melted in my mouth. Wow. I was just yelling. I was, I was walking around saying how juicy and buttery it was. I was saying that when I was uh, buttering the edges of our pizza when I worked in the cafe last yesterday. And that sounds good. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so. Glad someone also, can go out. I also got this. What's that? It's a, a pocket knife. What? That ain't a pocket knife. That's more like a Rambo knife. No, it's just a smaller pocket knife. Dude, this is huge. It just looks good. It looks huge because you have small feminine hands. Dude, look at that. That is neat, man. And this gold glows in the dark. Cut myself. Don't cut yourself. Oh, it glows in the dark? Yeah, this gold does. Can I close this? Oh. Your fingers. No, it don't. Glows in the dark? Yes. <laughs> it glows. Dude, that's pretty cool. There you go. It doesn't lock, though. It can, like, spring open in your pocket. Well, it's, not, oh! it's not spring loaded, though. Look. Oh! That's because you're pulling on it, though. What's, what's going to happen? It's just on? a little pressure if you're walking well, and your butt talks oh why would my it's not in my back pocket so why would my butt talks do anything if you bent over and pick up a penny well that's because it's spring loaded you're supposed to look like this like that but it's not spring spring loaded it's just oh that's so you can like impress the people that you're gonna rob no, no i'm not gonna rob nobody i'm just gonna use take my pocket. cookie dude leave me alone <laughs> i'm not gonna take your cookie hey that glow Any in the dark you think it's made out of radium no they haven't used radium and glow in the dark for many, 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 many years. Oh man, they used to put it on watches for. That's uh, when they first discovered. World War Two, World War One, World War One. No, I think it was pretty. Uh, was it World War? Could have. I don't know. Pretty interesting. I think they put it on uh, the hands of watches so they could see yep. what time it was, like late at night. It was a low glow radium. Well, everybody, they used it in makeup. Have you ever seen that show? Uh, how it's made? <laughs> no, no I don't think they made that episode. No. Dark Matters. Twisted but true. Dark. Not to be confused with Sci-Fi Channel's Dark Matter. Although that's a pretty good show. It is an excellent show. No, this I think this only ran like two seasons, unfortunately. Uh, but actually, three seasons. Cause Dark I've... Matters and Twist, Twisted but True? Oh, no. That, I'm talking about Dark Matters on Netflix. It's freaking oh, that, awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. I'm going to recover with that. Okay. But no, the Twisted but True one, what he would do is it starred um, the guy from Fringe. Oh, I don't remember the Again, here we name. are again. You bring up actors' names. We have no idea what the names are. The the eccentric guy? Yes. You know, the guy with... The old man. Yeah. Man, he's he, great. He, he also, also plays in Sherlock. And he also played in Sleepy Hollow. Dad. As the son. He actually came to Oklahoma last year or a year or two ago during a convention. Oh, did he? Yeah. What's his name? I forgot. Okay. Anyway. I got to see Tim Russ, though. Oh, go ahead. Continue. But anyway, so he... Uh, 
he would host this TV show, and he would talk about three three subjects, all true stories. It's all about you know how things came to be. Okay, so it was about the so, radium watches. So this one was specifically? about specifically. Yeah, this one was about the, when they found radium, how they're using it for watches. They hired these these women or whatever. They'd sit here and paint the dials and stuff. Well, no one knew the harm of radium back then, so they were using this nail polish. They oh yeah, makeup. I remember yeah, there was lipstick. they had all kinds of uh, commercials. Not, I mean, like this is going back, but when radium was first discovered, they thought it was a, a health agent, like it would make you healthier and look vibrant. And they put it in makeup. They put it in yeah. all kinds of stuff yeah. till their faces all started melting off. Like yeah, so they started they start dying of radium poisoning. Yeah. Well, that doesn't have radium in it, I guess. No, so. it does not have radium. So we won't die of any horrible. Well, that's good. So, Frank. What awesomeness are we going to talk about today in a short amount of time? Because we don't want our viewers to watch this for like two minutes. Look at that bar and say, good night. Exactly. No one wants to watch the uh, iPod for like two or three hours. Yeah, I think we should cover it. Well, I guess subjects. you could, but just pause it and just come back to it later. Well, we have several comic books we want to try to t touch on in our time. We've got Fantastic Four. They just relaunched it, number one. Relaunch. Why? Why did you lean in the picture? You're right here. Dramatic effect. Oh, okay. Next is Batman: Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 trade paperback. Descenders: Rise of the Robots. And Bubba Ho Tip. Oh. But wait, we got some coffee. What? Ah. Ah. Uh, here comes Shannon. our faithful Shannon with some more coffee and creamer. Uh, we cherish these moments. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Guess we can't pause, can we? No pause. No pause for station identification. So let's move oh. this right here. Make it look like Joker's holding it. We can have this at our break. Woo! Oh. All right, this is awesome. We have our cookies. We and have our, our coffee. Creamer. And we have our comics. All right, you were saying... Oh, yeah, Bubba, that was the last Bubba one. Bubba Hotep, yes. All right, that's kind of cool. So let's talk about one of these guys. Which one do you want to talk about? Which one do you want to I mean, about? I'm, I like robots, you know. When I say Rise of the Robots, I mean, it reminds me of uh, iRobot, the Terminator. Yeah. I mean. He kind of looks like a Terminator back on this issue. What is this? This is issue 25. It looks like a little, little robot Terminator guy there. That looks like the T-1000, if you ask me. It almost does. Yeah, it does. Looks pretty interesting. Why don't you give us a little synopsis on it? I don't know anything about this comic except for it's got some robots, man. Um, I like the artistry. I I think if I remember right, um, this has to do with. I mean, here's the thing. I, I think I I think what makes this book interesting is like it it follows the story of every story of robots we have ever been told. So I robot. You know, what was this, the premise there was robots that became sentient, had their own personalities, and were driven away. Um, Not really. It was about well, one robot. Well, one, um, one, one AI taking over all the robots. So well, they really didn't, they didn't become sentient. Only one was really sentient. That's true. Okay. So, but the point is that it just made a fearful scenario. Yes. I mean, I mean Terminators are the same way. I mean, if you look at the... The Terminator movies, I think they've gone a little further back with, with the storyline, so you're able to see exactly how the rise of the machines and the Terminator became, and then how they just kind of took over the world. This is, I think, similar. I think this story has to do with Tim 21, uh, and they call these robots harvesters, and apparently they just decimate the world. Um, and I mean, it's just a story that. It's like, man, there's not a really good robot. Well, this storyline, I think, is about... Doesn't he have a name? I believe he has well, Tim 21. He's the one single robot. It seemed like either they were driven off the world or driven away. Well, I know they're hunted on all like different worlds. There's bounty, hunt, there's bounty on, on oh. all robots. And he's basically on the run. And so there's bounties on robots... And so it's really world against world and man against machine. So it's not just man against this robot. Well, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Harrison Ford movie that oh. come to mind? Yeah. What movie was that? Blade Runner. 
Yeah. Hey, look, we actually knew a name of something. Blade Runner. Uh, there was a, a Not relaunch. A yeah, relaunch. Relaunch like, of. Yeah, it's the future of yeah. that storyline. Yeah. Which. I'm sad to say again, I have not seen that one. That is an awesome movie. If you, you have seen not Martin? seen that, holy smokes. That's why I pulled this up. I was like, man, you know, I was sure by looking at the cover, you know, it's going to be the same kind of Isaac Asimov, which is, he's amazing. He, Isaac Asimov is an amazing sci-fi. Father of all robots. Yeah. Sci-fi writer. And, but, and I think a lot of these storylines come from some of his basic Everything that has to do with robots comes from Isaac Asimov. Yeah. Everything. The three laws, everything. If you do research on Isaac Asimov... Okay, what are the three we, laws? Do no harm. Don't hurt humans. And you can't hurt yourself. Something like that. If you Google it... I don't it, remember the three laws. I can't even remember like, the three I just rules of cleaning my house. I just remember don't harm humans. That's the most important law. Well, anyways, this was, I thought it was pretty cool. So if you're into sci-fi and you're into robot stuff... Think we'll call you Defender? Descender? No, Descender. 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 Sorry. Rise of the Robots. Pretty cool. It is. And the artwork looked pretty nice in there, too. It did. I really do like the artwork in this. We'll feature some of that stuff here on the clips that we're, as we're discussing about. Pretty neat. Looks like watercolor. Could be. Well, you would know better because you're more into art than I am. You yes. know, really know you. Crayons. He knows you know. from oils all the way to crayons. All right, what else you got there? Hey, would you like a bite of a cookie? No, thank you. Just like last time, I'm uh, still a diabetic. I thought maybe your diabetic kind of was under control. Well, it is. I'm getting the sugars down. Oh, do you but take the, your shots? Yes. Then you could probably have to Why would I take something to raise it up again if I'm trying to bring it down? It kind you of know, that's interesting. Purpose. I can't eat these cookies either. Why the heck do we call the show cookies? Well, we have we should have been something else. Well, it's a Gluten-free something. Well, they do have sugar-free, gluten-free cookies and stuff like that. They don't sound right, would it? No. Gluten-free coffee, co coffee and comics. Yeah, that don't sound right. But no, it just was off the tongue. Could call it and were, gut gluten-free. and Sooner or later, we'll be able to eat the cookies. Okay. That's all that matters. They're awesome we'll, cookies, by we'll, the way. We'll, we'll get healthy again. And they're delicious cookies. They're huge. Yeah. What are those, chocolate chip? Chocolate chip. She does brownies, too. Brownies. Hey, dude. I'm sorry. It smells good. It's, Hey, I, don't want I that can't done. eat it. I'm going to smell it. All right. Anyway, so we got the relaunch of Fantastic Four, number one. Yeah, you know what I hear about that comic? And, you know, I I hear it's thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen. Continue. Where did you hear it's thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I was just, uh, while I was doing my research on Tim 21, yeah. I was eavesdropping on you just a little bit as you were crying over there in the corner saying, wow, the reviews on this suck. <laughs> I, didn't, I heard that, and I thought, man, this is great. Yes, I didn't say the reviews on this suck. Oh. I said they feel the, the reviews on this it was disappointing. I'm just saying, why does Fantastic Four every time have well, pitfalls? I mean, well, they can't do a movie. Line. It's like How the, many times do they relaunch a movie? Four well, times? False. That's fantastic. <laughs> Golly. They don't, I think wow. They only had, they've only had really two... Hit movies, and I call them hit. Like they were, the <laughs> hit first one, the head. Yeah. Uh, was a VHS. Yeah, the first one that came out in two thousands. That was a good series with the Rise of the Silver Surfer and stuff. The wow. second relaunch, when they were young kids or whatever, was horrible, and I'm pretty sure I found the shelf really quick. But and there's one. Didn't Jessica one. Alba play in the Fantastic Four? Yeah, that series was okay. Again, it falls under. What in the world did you do to the character? Like why? Why'd you have to screw up Doctor Doom? Really, he's just a, he's just like one of the smartest people in the Marvel universe. He was never on the ship. He was never radiated with any kind of solar energies. He didn't turn into a metal thing. He just wears that mask as a suit of armor to protect himself. You mean like a cop would wear a vest? Basically, or like Magneto wears that helmet to block Xavier's mind from huh. probing his mind. So he's not like some burnt guy underneath? No, he's not. He always thought, you know, everybody always thought he was scarred. And stuff so, like I mean, like, he thought. goes to Walmart with that mask on? Just yeah. in case someone battles him? That's right. But why would he go to Walmart? I don't know. I mean, don't everybody go to Walmart? Area. Why would he go to Walmart? That makes no sense. Everything's brought to him. He's the ruler of a country. But he's wearing to protect what? Uh, riots? Well, that's his, that's his disguise. Oh, okay. Not his no. disguise, because everybody knows who he is, but yes. 
Okay, so it's a. Dis- it, it's really just to make make, make him look menacing. It works. Because it took a long time he before he looks took off that. Scary. Yeah. And it was a long time before he took off the mask. And I mean, Doctor Doom. Yeah. Doctor Doom. I mean, isn't that name? What's your name, Doom? Jeez. Well, his name is Victor Von Doom. His last name is Doom. Well, it's Doom. It's and like, I'm sure. If you it was you, it'd be Victor Von Diaz. Okay. That's not scary. Well, it's not scary because that's why, you know, obviously that's why it's not saying it's not Diaz. All right. So, uh, anyway. Thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen? No. No? no. Give it a chance. Read what the is, comic, is what you're well, saying. The issue, the problem is, is that the Fantastic Four has been out of the universe for a while. They broke up, I guess, because they really couldn't think of no storylines. The last, you know, last time I re- read this, you know, they had a falling out with Reed Richards. Everybody splits up. Because they feel like Reed Richards kind of sounds like Avengers when they kind of had their little. Yeah, but but them it was they broke up originally because they found out Reed Richards knew that the cosmic radiation would change them. Why? He lied. Why would he's Marvel a, he's a decide doctor. to do that twist? You know, to make Reed Richards out to be the person who changed the entire Fantastic Four. I didn't like that. I didn't like the storyline that they did that to him. But again, they did it to him. And so now the storyline basically follows, you know, Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm. Oh, so it's the Fantastic Two right now. And so, <laughs> and you know, they're they could be kind of fantastic. Well, the issue I guess they're having is that uh, the storyline really looks like it comes out of Marvel Two in One storyline, because it's Marvel Two in One did, did a Fantastic Four. Two story. people in one comic. Two comics in one comic. Oh. Anyway, and so. I would say give give it a chance, because the Fantastic Four is a huge staple in the Marvel universe, and they really need to bring the, these characters back. They've been absent too long. I would like I said, well, even if it, even if it's like slow reading because it's like a, it's like a melodrama in here. It's really not action packed like a normal Fantastic Four book would should be. Yeah. But like everything, they're trying to rebrand it, rebring it back out, you know. And so I I would give the writer and the artist the chance to. Develop, yeah, develop the, the characters. Give, okay, so give, guys, let's I always give say give a comic readers, book ten issues. Let's give Fantastic Four a chance. All right, which one do you want to talk about? Let's see what happens next month. Hey, I mean, do we have time to talk about these two comics? We can always hold off till next time. Yeah, yeah, I think we should. We're gonna we can talk about these next time. Okay, we can be surprise people. Teach me new turtles, and oh, Bubba Hotep. Which is based off of Bruce Campbell's movie, Bubba Hotel. If you haven't seen it, hilarious. We'll, ta- we'll talk about those maybe next time. If not, you know, we'll have something else to talk about. But we wanted to cover these four books. But Fantastic Four, you know, like everything else, has ruined everything on us. All right. It ruined everything. It's... Took away our time. It didn't take away our time. Everything's going to take away our time. <laughs> okay. What else should we talk about? Listen, last episode we talked about verses. And I think... We should talk versus, like characters versing each other. Well, then, but let's limit because I think we talk too much. Like, sure, I think we let's would. limit to one versus one. Sure, that's so. easy. That's what versus is. One versus one, by the way. No, it could be Fantastic Four versus the Avengers. Oh, you know, it could, it could be a group. It don't have to be one. But well, I mean, one topic. Like we had Alfred versus uh, Jarvis, but then we also talked about Perry White Alfred, versus. Then we had also Perry White versus Perry Saint White. John. Perry White, uh, mm, mm. give me some coffee. Yeah, and maybe this time we'll have better graphics than two stick people. All right, we should talk about two characters that no one's going to be like, "Wow, that's like boring," but we're going to bring it up anyways. I think boring. Well, because you know everyone's thinking, "Okay, wow, the Hulk and Superman, or the Hulk and Wonder Woman, or Harry Potter and his and Hermione." But I don't we're think anybody's ever talked about that. Oh well, you know what we're talking about. We're gonna talk about Zane, Zan, and Jaina, the Wonder Twins, from the cartoon Super Friends. They're superheroes. That has been mentioned since 1977. Does no one know who these two wonderful twins are? Well, they look like Vulcans. They do look like Vulcans. And their powers are they touch their fists together and Wonder Twin powers activate without them touching each other's fists. There's nothing. Wonder Twin powers activate! Shape of an eagle! Form of water! 
You know what, I just thought about this for a second. Because I want to pit these two characters against each other. How can why they do... would Why would Zan... Zan. Get... I think it's Zan. Z no, it's Zan. 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 Z Zan. Z -A -N. Zan. Zan and Jane. Why would Zan fight his sister? Because, dude, that cookie, they might only have one cookie. And Zan wants it, but, you know, Jaina just steals it. That would make me furious. I would fight my sister. For a cookie. Yeah. She threw me on a pile of toys once. Who? Cindy. That's our malevolent sister, just so you know. Yeah. So, anyways, I thought, hey, this would be kind of cool. Who would win that battle? First, they'd have to Wonder Twin powers each other first. Well, that's and it's like, why would they, hold on, if they're going to fight each other, why would they Wonder Twin power each other? Because without because that, they'd be like regular mortal people. Who wants to get hurt? Anyways, let's just assume they Wonder Twin power. This is say they could turn into the Wonder Twins just by powering their own abilities, just yes. for the sake of this. So you have Zane, Zan and Jaina. One of them only works, one of their powers is water or water elements or whatever. Water and ice, that's basically all you can do. And then uh, the other, she just about anything. anything. Yeah, anything she can think of except water or ice. Which is the stupidest, stupidest. She has the best ability. She has the best ability. But he would win. Hold on, you didn't even, we didn't get into this yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, go what, ahead. Okay, what is he going to turn into a bucket of ice and throw it at her? First he no. needs someone to throw it. He's always like turning to a bucket. No, when he, there, he could be, he could be a tidal wave water. It can be water coming at you. You don't just have to be a puddle. She can be a planet. No, she can't be a planet. She you just said she could turn into anything. Animal, human, like that kind of thing. She could turn into a dinosaur. She could turn into a gorilla. That kind she of stuff. She could turn into a big gorilla. Yes, she could. As big as she wanted. That's right. So the waters could, like, just touch his, her knees. Okay. She's surviving. He, well, she can I, drink them. Okay. I'm thirsty. Oh, Okay, but he's sentient, water, so you would drown. So all he has to do is cover your face, and you're dead. So there's no battle, because if you punch water, nothing happens to water. Well, so she, Zan would win. So See, but if she, Everybody she, underestimates Zan because it's like, oh, he's just water. What could water do? Because all, all he did in the cartoon, I'm a sheet of ice. I'm a bucket of ice. I'm a bucket of water. And they always assume that she's the strongest because she can turn into any animal. I think she's the coolest water, because she can do that. She turned into still, purple apes and yeah. but still, all he has flying to do is wrap, he just has to wrap himself around your head. You're but dead. When, you know, when he would turn to a bucket of ice and she'd have to carry him around like a hawk. No, that was the monkey's job. The monkey carry. Uh, what was that monkey's name? I don't remember the monkey. Oh, yeah, I do remember that monkey. I don't know why they had that monkey. I, they probably... Probably a rip-off. His name? Bleep? name is Bleep. Yeah, I, I don't even think about that character. But now I think about it, you wonder, was that character created because, like... Well, I, the same reason Zan and Jaina were created. Well, <laughs> just a weird... Just, I don't just, the, my, just their friend, Bleep. Or is it Gleep? You know what, there, is it Gleep? It might be Gleep. Uh, Speed awesome. Racer had the Spritel and Chim Chim. And they had... That Chim Chim was the monkey. Maybe they stole the idea from... Maybe that was the monkey. Maybe... You they could have been. Peter Racer was around for a long time, too. And everyone liked little monkeys. Yeah. We could talk about Sprite on Chim Chim later. Okay, so but ladies and gentlemen. also Space Ghost, they, they had a monkey, too. It's probably the same monkey. Well, I'm thinking the voice of Zan and Jaina also probably played on Space Ghost because they were almost the same as Zan and Jaina. If you watch Space Ghost, it's a brother and sister and a monkey. Except wow. a human. Okay, so Zan and Jaina, you're saying Z Zane would win. Zan. Zan. Zane. Not Zane, Zan. 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 Will win. Yes, he would win. Thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get a bucket of water. All right. Tie it over on your head. Change it to any animal you want. Listen. If you can do it without oxygen. Listen. Well, I guess if she turned herself into a dolphin. But he'd still be in her lungs. All right. So, so we are going to be right back after this commercial break. Uh, we're going to talk about an upcoming, well, movie that's already out. We haven't even seen it yet. So, man, it's going to be epic, but you have to watch in order to find out what we're going to talk about. That's <laughs> so great about this. We don't have to tell the viewers what we're going to talk about. It makes yeah. them want to watch it. So Which we'll be right back. Can we get some coffee? All right, you want some coffee? Yeah. They do call me Tyree. Just let me know. I know that. It's confusing. 
yeah. When you say, you know. It's funny because it's named after. <gasps> oh! Well, that didn't work out right. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Jeez, man, you can't even pour coffee. Holy jambronis. Oh, let me get the lid. <laughs> I need that. It's so important. Oh, this coffee is criminal. Honey, you killed the petunias. Then you admit it. Your coffee really is murder. Papa Eddie, my coffee, it's murder. It's either too bitter or too weak. Try Folgers. Because Folgers coffee is mountain grown. Mountain grown? Like the sign says, mountain grown for richer flavor. You know it's a crime not to have delicious coffee like this all the time. We will now that I've discovered the mountains. Ooh. Folgers Coffee, mountain grown for richer flavor. That was a good commercial. <laughs> was where, where do we find these commercials? I have no clue. All right, so I hope you guys liked uh, that commercial. I sure did. <laughs> All right, so we are going to talk about a movie that I just heard him talking about it to himself. He talks to himself sometimes. Of course, I'm doing research, and I Eva's dropping, and he talked about, he went, man, I can't wait to see this movie, The, the Meg. It's been out about a week. No, it just came out yesterday. Oh, smokes. I guess I've been watching the coming attractions with all the movies I've seen. I just think... Oh. Okay, so cool. It's it's come out. And what'd you think about it? I haven't seen it yet. I want to see it. Why are we talking about it? Because you just brought it up. I think... Thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen. You haven't even seen it. No, I'm kidding. I think... Listen. It's... Uh, who's the actor who's plays in that? Jason Statham. Yeah. And, uh, Look at that. We're on very, cue today. We're getting names right. Very... Very popular with um, a few movies. The is it the uh, is it the machinist or the mechanic or mechanic. mechanic? It's a remake of Charles Bronson's movie. I just saw the Mechanic Two. Wow, that was came out like a couple of years ago. Yeah, <sighs> seemed like it came out twenty years ago. You didn't? Like, I thought that was awesome. I like it, believe it or not. Another Expendables when he's in the Expendables, man, amazing. So here he is. Is going to be in this new Shark movie. We haven't seen it. So you don't have to worry about us like blowing the the storyline. The storyline. No. How can you blow the storyline? It's basically Jaws on steroids. That's exactly what it is. So we've seen this movie before. It's called Jaws. No, it's not called Jaws though. But the reason why it's called the Meg, it's meant short for the, a megalodon, which is an ancient prehistoric shark. Who knows that? I mean, honestly, who would know that? Just but it's. Well, they do mention megalodon in the coming attractions. So. I know that, but let's say we're fishermen, and it's like, oh man, that's a megalodon. Well, when the well, shark is larger than your ship <laughs> by like two or three times. You did say ship. I did say ship. We have to watch what we say on the show, dude. I know. That's why I don't curse. Okay. Anyways. Anyways, anyways uh, that little girl, uh, the, the 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 little coming attractions that I saw there was a little girl playing with that little robot. I mean, robot, right? It's gonna be a killer robot. Anyways, so he's playing, and here comes the, the shark and bites down on the tube. Underground. And I mean, if this is bigger than a... Ship. Sh what? A ship. Okay. I thought, you, I thought you said something else. But it's like the, it just barely I'll say it. boat. Is that better? Is that better if I say boat, although a boat is not a ship because a ship is larger than a boat? Stroke. Exactly. It's not a boat. It's a what? It's a ship. Okay. So, anyways, that Meg just really just didn't do anything with that tube. Just played with it. Yeah, except put all teeth marks all over the tube. I know, but you think about that for a second. If that really was a Meg, that that would have been the movie wouldn't even happened. Well, no, because you got to also think that the glass they've got to use to go underwater to handle that much pressure. That's right. I forgot all about it. We have already invented transparent aluminum. Yep. 
That's print aluminum. Yeah. Are you talking about Star Trek? Yep. Transparent <laughs> aluminum, baby. <laughs> can, hold t- can hold two humpback whales, a hundred tons of water. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Transparent aluminum. Okay, he's talking about. He's referring to Star Trek but, Four, the original series. Well, I'm just saying that glass couldn't be. Okay, but that's not what they're using here. How do you know that? I mean, it would look like just. I mean, glass. Because I don't think anybody's thought about transparent aluminum since Star Trek. Do 4. some research, because transparent aluminum is something that is available to the public today. Where you didn't know that, did you? No, you tell me where. Oh, I finally found something you didn't know about. <laughs> don't go. <laughs> Oh, I just saw something that said transparent aluminum is just... I poke your eye. The, the no, transparent you aluminum is available. I mean, it's expensive. Okay, where? I wish I had more details. But if you so, do the research, yeah, you can say it all you want. You guys are going to research it. Pick up your little phone. Transparent aluminum. It's a, it's a fact today. Believe it or not, they've created... I don't believe it because you can't even... They're able to create... A glass what website? That's one inch what? thick no. and hold a billion tons of water. No. Yes. That's well, not fiction. a billion tons, that's, but a lot of tons. That's and fiction. I, it's fake. It's not fake. Let's look it up. How thick would a piece of your plexiglass need to be at 60 feet by 10 feet to withstand the pressure of 18,000 cubic feet of water? Oh, that's easy. Six inches. We carry stuff that big in stock. I have uh, noticed. Now, suppose. Just suppose I were to show you a way to manufacture a wall that would do the same job, but be only one inch thick. <laughs> would that be worth something to you, eh? <laughs> You're joking. Perhaps a professor could use your computer. Please. Computer? Computer? Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How quaint. Transparent aluminum? That's the ticket, laddie. Bring the windows. Do some research. Look up transparent aluminum, and you might it's, just be surprised. It, it, you uh, it, I'm not, you a, might just be just a little bit surprised. I will concede that it's possible to make transparent aluminum. I will not concede that one inch thick transparent aluminum, which doesn't exist. Okay, let's get past hold, the transparent aluminum, which hold we know that exists. much water we know or that much pressure. Thank you, Scotty, for. Uh, giving it to that guy who finally made the breakthrough from 19. He's probably, what, 98 years old? Probably. He's rich now. No, he's not rich. Rich? If he was Beyond rich. avarice. Is that the word you know avarice No. Means? Anyways. Anyways, so here's this movie, The Meg. Reminds me of Jaws in every other way, but there's a puppy scene in there. There was no puppy in Jaws, by the way. No. I have to give him that. There was a dog in the water, I thought. Like a in Jaws? Shepherd. I could have sworn there was one swimming. They changed it. They put a little put a little puppy dog in there. I mean, that's the funny thing, too. That is just a little puppy, puppy, puppy dog. And that's like a raisin compared to a Meg. Yes. So, wow. I think it's going to be an interesting movie. Yeah. Thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen. How could it be an interesting movie? Oh, you... there was another... Oh, let's talk about how many shark hold movies on, there have been. Hold it. How can it be an interesting movie... But thumbs down, ladies and gentlemen. Interesting movie in the sense that we've invented transparent aluminum and it's been proven by the first sequence of that, what do you call it, so that trailer. And yes, that's the thumbs up, ladies and gentlemen, technology. Yeah. I've been waiting for a new Jaws movie. I don't know why they just didn't call it Jaws to begin with, but I'm excited to see it again. I've always, I've always been fascinated with sharks. So the idea of a megalodon blows my mind. Well, I guess it's almost like Rampage. 
That yeah. blew our mind too. Yeah. Anyways, that's just my opinion. You should go see the movie. I'll probably be dragged to see the movie, and I might just have like, wow, that was amazing. I'm pretty sure you will. All right, so guys, I think that might just wrap it up for today. It does. Thanks for joining us again for Coffee's Comics. I said, keep saying Coffee's. Why do I feel? I don't know. I knew you said that before. It's not Coffee's. It's Coffee coffee Cookies. Oh, Coffee Cookies. Thank you. My word. It's a good day. It's a good day. Coffee Cookies and Comics. Yes. Well, it's only our second episode. Chris and Frank. Frank and Chris. Come and check us out next time, guys. If you have any questions or comments leave those below like us subscribe to the channel don't like us oh don't send us emails write down comments below of any suggestions subscribe you... look at that cool can, can i finish the sentence yes <laughs> i think you should always finish your sentence when you start it i try to i really do even when people talk over you no no you should do that no you should never should try teach people a lesson i'm doing it right now i know you are continue the, the next episode might be a solo one anyway to subscribe to our channel, leave us comments or suggestions of any kind of topic you want us to cover, and we'll cover it. Until then, thanks again for visiting Coffee, Comics, and Com... Coffee, Cookies, and Comics. I'll get it right before this is over. See you guys. See, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't.